Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. All right. I'm going to do that one more time because I didn't. All right. Hold on. All right. Hi, everyone. And, uh, nope. Do it again. Do it again. No, I think comments. we should keep that one. <laughs> I think we should keep. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to <clears throat> Royal Path. This is Andrew. I'm I'm Andrew. All right. This can be fourth fourth time to try. <laughs> this should be the intro right here, by the way. Hi everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I am your host Andrew, and I'm here. Here, I'm here to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is music that you guys listen to when you are in the doldrums? I'm not talking about like spiritually going through it, like you know, maybe it's like a time where it's set aside for prayer and getting closer to God, but like maybe you're just kind of having like a uh, day, you know, like maybe a couple things didn't work out the way you wanted to, and on the ride home. Like you pop on something because you know this will kind of maybe help you bring the heat when you get home to your family or whatever. So, uh, because I mean, right off the bat, I'll vamp for a second so you guys can think. I mean, it's always going to be probably like Andrew WK, you are not alone, is a good one. Uh, and then always Beastie Boys, Beastie Boys will generally always they're pretty positive. Um, any kind of posy hardcore usually works pretty well. And then I'm blanking on other stuff, but I mean, there's a variety of people I really like listening to when it's just kind of like, I just need to kind of break out of like a, like a headspace. So what do you got? How about you guys? How about naming some music we haven't named before? I know I just did not because I'm trying to add some stuff to the playlist besides what we have, but yeah. And speaking of which, who threw out whose suggestion was Rome? I don't know. Rome? Yeah. Is it on the playlist? Apparently it's on the playlist. My man Jay was, was saying it was on the playlist. Was it me? Some neo folk stuff. Uh, Rome. I don't know. I don't remember putting that on there. Maybe wow. it's like a similar, like you know, when they have like similar. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, maybe at because at the bottom of Spotify it'll be like here's some stuff that's like that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, that was a happy mistake because it's super good. Nice. They're giving me some neo folk. Anyways, uh, you know, for me, sometimes I want to go deeper into that space. So, sure. <laughs> so, uh, you know, gone, gone is like a, a good, it takes me, I, I just, I go to the other side when I put that on. So it's really good. But, um, makes for a very good theme music too for a yeah. cool podcast. Yeah. Gone is incredible. Uh, Sleeping Giant, actually. Sleeping Giant. Yeah, Sleeping can... Giants. Uh, you know, Christian hardcore type stuff, but it's, you know, super rah-rah, and it, it just hits the trick, you know? What's some specific Christian hardcore? Because... Well, Sleeping I... Giant. <laughs> that they're, oh, they're sure, like, sure. Yeah, they're incredible, yeah. For, for me, Christian hardcore can mean different things than it can for you. Because I'm like, when you think of Christian hardcore, which is really what people called it back in the day, but it's Christian metalcore. So like, as are they dying and hasty, yeah, 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 stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. People called that hardcore back in the day, and I was very confused because it didn't really sound like the hardcore I had known. But it sounded like very, um, sound like metalcore. It sounded like Kill Switch Engage, you know. So it, and that's the metalcore band. Or at least one of them. So, but yeah, I never really got into Sleeping Giant. What about you, Cyprian? If I'm in the doldrum, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be like stuff from it's gonna be stuff from the seventies for me. Oh, so like, so like, what like? Because I'm really thinking about like if I'm like I'm just in a foul mood. What is gonna like straighten me out? It's gonna be like roots reggae. Mm. So it's gonna be. Marley's, Whalers, 
It's yeah. going to be like Afrobeat, like Fela Kuti. Oh, yeah, yeah. You put some Fela on, I'm like, I can't beat. The, I, th this is this is a James Brown, oh, yeah. uh, Nina Simone. Like these are going to be uh, there's it's, you know what it is? Something funky. Yeah, that's really what it comes down to. Like, it's got to be something, something funky. Guitars got to be in there. Horns. You know that's what I mean? Good. A nice backbeat. That's that's, good, that's that's and and the baseline. Something yeah. about a baseline will always pick me like a real funky baseline. How do you be sad with a funky baseline? That's really good. It's impossible. That's really you good. know. So yeah. th those are yeah. Those are those are always the secret weapons for me. Those are always the secret weapons. The seventies funk. Some and 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 again, all over the map. Take it all over the world. If it's funky from that period, psh, I'm in. That's it. Yeah, it's good. Thank you for adding a good amount of diversity to the playlist, by the way, because I mean, you, you, so far, you your contributions have been the tone that you come to my head are Kanye West and Genesis. So, and yeah. Bette Midler, <laughs> and Bette Midler. But wait, yeah, is it Bette Midler? Yeah, I think yes, absolutely, Bette Midler. Yeah. Wind beneath, wind beneath my wings. Come on, yeah, man. Bette Midler. Hey, you, uh, you ever heard Ethiopics? No. You're welcome. Oh, you just put me onto something. Okay. Yeah, I'm you're gonna. Gonna yeah note, note taken right now yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of a looser episode by the way it's pretty late kind of late and so this is like royal path after hours andrew's andrew's a little bit sleepy there's also been a day for andrew glory to god i'm not complaining it's okay um but uh it's gonna be a little bit more lax uh i would also be remiss if at the top of the out uh, top of the hour the top of the show or whatever i didn't mention that we do have merch now and the URL is royalpath.store. Easy. So, easy. Easy. And I checked it out. And I got to say that I just feel like I should get some free flip flops. That's all I'm saying. And, and I mentioned that in the group chat or some socks would be cool. There's some sweatpants. That's all. Uh, there's a phone cover and tank tops and blah, blah, blah. There's lots and lots of other stuff. Ooh, that's a nice tote bag. We should note this. We should note that if you were to, uh, let's say, get something uh, that was for Andrew, who wears a size what in the flip-flop? Uh, 12. Who wears a size 12 in the flip-flop. If you were to get something and, and you were to, I don't know, I, I don't know, maybe it could be sent to uh, St. Mary's or something like that. At A third of the profits goes to the designer uh edgar cards who also did our intro so if you love our intro this is a way to support him he he absolutely just did it as uh you know a, a contribution and a, a labor of love and then two-thirds goes to uh saint mary of egypt orthodox church in kansas city so keep the lights on and make sure father doesn't have to get a part-time job at mickey d <laughs> yeah. that's right that's right so if and you Trump's were wanting to do that, to in the D's. Yeah. no, 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 <laughs> not unless you're passing those delicious fish, like fish sandwiches out the back door to me, father. That's there, hey, I'll eat those. I, I love the filet of fish. People are like, don't eat that filet of fish. I said, well, don't take me to McDonald's because yeah. I will be eating. <laughs> be sure. And I, I, I very much got some vibes when we we're, when we were talking about that, about like, be sure and smash that like button and like, like re leave a review <laughs> and subscribe like the typical YouTube crap. But no, for real, we do have a merch store and there's some pretty cool stuff in there. I was actually pretty impressed. Um, I can't attest to the quality of anything, but you know, nor can I, there are worse things to take a gamble on. I'll say that mm -hmm. there are far worse mm -hmm. things Buy our merch. It might be good or it might mm -hmm. not. So all either right. way, either way, that's that's how to uh, if you do want to financially support, it's a nice way to financially support. But we also accept cash or credit. That works no, well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All proceeds go to St. Mary's. I'm not saying absolutely. That, so. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we were going to do the Cree, but several things have come up this week and we would be remiss if we didn't talk about them. Uh so I'm going to kind of take a backseat because I'm probably the most uninformed on a lot of this stuff, except for Mr. Peterson. Oh, um, and then, but this other thing I have a base understanding of, so I'm going to, I'm going to be the Joe stand in 
and kind of be like the Joe every guy, you know, I like my, I like my, my beer cold and my hot dogs hot type of guy. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't drink, but uh, then we'll kind of take it from there. And I, I'm guessing that these are issues that do that. They're, they merit discussion without a doubt. So next week, I think we'll be us wrapping up the creed, but this week, you know, we we're going to talk about this stuff. So Father's got a clip. I think are we starting it off with this? Um, and just to set this up, uh, I think Father has a clip that he wants us to watch. Um, it's a guy reacting. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a Protestant reacting to a leader in the or the leader. We'll give sure. uh, we'll give the bigger. Let's give the bigger context of like the original Go ahead, Father. Leader, I guess you know. So um, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, however many days ago what do you think like it was like a week it was in this last week or so yeah yeah Um, i think i think that's about right week ago so um the head of the satanic church in south africa put out a video um kind of detailing this event that he had in which caused him to leave the satanic church of South Africa. And I think he said May, but he's just now kind of releasing this video of what's going on. And in a nutshell, the video um, is outlining his encounter that he had, uh, that he says with Jesus. So um, it's about like a 30 minute long, you know, uh, video. So it's not really one we could kind of like sit and, and watch. But in the nutshell, he speaks about how um, he had been doing um, some interviews. And these interviews were kind of some recent interviews were kind of coming to a head and they're kind of coming off of a, um, a good run, I guess, of promotion for the South African uh, Church of Satan. And um, he is stating how he had uh, in particular encountered this one lady who basically showed him this kind of like unconditional love, this Christian woman. And that's pertinent because um, later on after this kind of interview where he says, you know, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. And this woman just gives him, you know, this kind of hug and all these things. He states that he's, um, engaging a particular ritual to ascend to a, to a higher uh, place of awareness and power uh, and influence. Uh, I do have a question for you real quick, Father. Sure. Uh, it, he said he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. So is this like one of those like atheist Satan churches that are just... Yeah, yeah. Good question. Because typically speaking, when you talk about the Church of Satan that you're getting into, and, and I don't, so I'm sure someone's going to go, you know, click, 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 no, you're wrong. But generally speaking, we're, we're talking like Anton LaVey and this kind of like branch, and it's more humanism. It's it's more of kind of like, oh, it's more of a philosophy, and we use the devil as a kind of anthropomorphic projection for like man's desires and like all that stuff, right? Okay. As opposed to what we would say would be like Luciferian, where it's just like, we actually believe in, you know, we believe in Lucifer, who is the bringer of light, which that will get into that. Uh, And, you know, he really wants to liberate mankind, all these things. And then in in there, you have these various strands where it could be like uh, more of a, and they're all weird, right? Because some of them can bring in a more Crowleyan kind of influence, right? and the Nima and like do a thought wills the whole law and all this stuff, right? That gets kind of like, I think the thing to understand is if there's like some sort of codified Church of Satan thing now, um, it's like any other religion, I guess, where it's just maybe um, a derivative of something else, but ultimately people kind of will bring in whatever they got to the soup. Is that fair? Sure, and what flavor is this guy? This is the, the, uh the former rather than the latter well, here, here, here's the question right okay. this, this 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 is the thing because you're right on the one hand he says i don't believe in jesus christ right to this lady 
but on the other hand, he's doing, and I'm sure they'll say, well, the reason for that is, but at least from our perspective, it's like, you know, he's wanting to do a ritual to encounter, you know, higher intelligence, the devil, whatever. So sounds like all kinds of confused to me. Sure. But, um, anyways, so he says he's, he's doing this ritual to ascend, right? And he says that he's doing this ritual and then um, he reports that Jesus appears to him. And he says that at that point in time, he, he became very cocky and was like, oh, if you Jesus prove it. And then he says that all of a sudden he was flooded with this incredible amount of love. Um, and from there, it was like a very transformative thing. So. It's almost like at this point that I'm just trying to give like a bigger um, overview of it. And then when we get into watching this other gentleman who's a kind of known uh, YouTube personality, evangelical kind of charismatic guy, his response to it. Um, and the reason why I, I wanted to do the response to it is because this is the reason why I think the video needs to be brought up is that um, I have, I have, my own kind of like thing on it. So the thing I don't know, and you know, guys, it's a real path, so there's no real pre-production on this. So I don't know, um, and Cyprian, maybe you can speak to this. Are we gonna run into like copyright stuff because it's another guy's channel or what, how's this gonna work? Let me look at the thing on him. Let, let me look at the thing. Uh, it should say what the, should say what the copyright is. Uh, let me see at the bottom. I need to be. I need to try to find it here. So I think, we should, be, I think we should be okay. Okay, never mind. I, th I'll I think see. we should be. Yeah, I think on this one, we're not making. Generally, it. generally, you can comment on anything on YouTube. But let me look at the settings here. Uh, yeah, I think we're fine. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be good on this. What were you this saying? This particular here? one. Uh, I was going to ask a question to try and vamp. I'll save it for later. Okay. But I think that's a good enough background. So anyway, so, sure. yeah, I mean, essentially, uh, it, it, it came into our sphere probably not too long. I mean, it was pretty fresh off the presses by the time it started circling around. Mm -hmm. Was that about, mm -hmm. is that right? Or were we, were we behind on it? No, no I think. This has come out I between don't... last recording and this recording, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. So uh, I'll just say just my last thing to kind of set it up, whatever, but um, I, I went through a kind of like quick gamut, like processing of it. And then like, even in my response, I was like, oh, this is problematic. Mm -hmm. so oh, this, this interesting. Is, this is really problematic. What's that? No, I mean, it's just, it's just interesting. I'm I'm interested to hear I'm just interested to hear your thoughts on this father because I really don't I don't know what to think about this one way or the other. Um yeah, so I'm interested I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I just think that it's one of those it's yeah, I don't know. Should we play it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'll uh, be is, point to Brian too if I could like a pause it, let me comment on this or that. Of course. You know, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. We'll uh that. just we'll tell me where to start it from, I think is the key here. Okay. Again, yeah. folks, no. No pre-pro. We just we 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 just roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Our, our let me see. Wait, let me make sure that I've got the share right because I want to be able to share the sound. Okay, perfect. Okay. And away we go. Should I just start at the beginning? It's eleven yeah, minutes. Twelve minutes. That's good. The other thing too is I just want to take Please. note. I just want to take note. I can't see it there, but like, what was that seventy thousand views? It's got seventy thousand views. Yeah. Okay, and this is just this one guy commenting on the one video. Yeah, the yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So we're not talking about the original video itself. This right. is just one of many that I've seen that are kind of like comp like this thing is, you know, literally going viral and like exponential. So let's just kind of keep this in mind. Okay, go ahead. In the satanic church, and in the middle of doing a ritual 
you encounter the love of God and the power of Jesus. This is exactly what happened to Rion, who is the co-founder of the South African Satanic Church, Satanic Temple. And in May, he had an encounter with God that he's gonna share in this video. Guys, this is an amazing testimony. If you've been online for the last few days, you've probably seen this floating around. I want to show you a bunch of the of the testimony and then I'll as well link the full video down below. And we're gonna look at some powerful points that he makes and listen to his encounter with Jesus. So I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be a good one. Co-founder of the Satanic Church in South Africa, Rion, is gonna be sharing his testimony here. Let's react and watch this super, super powerful stuff. We're gonna check this out together. I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on it and then we're gonna watch some parts here at the end where he says something pretty interesting here. So let's take a look at this. So the important part of, of my experience is that in the middle of May last, it's about yeah, two months ago, I did my last interview for the South African Satanic Church, not knowing that that would be my last radio interview that I'm doing. Um, and I, and I, most people know about the interview, it was, it was a Cape Talk. And there's a woman who works there. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I didn't speak to her before this video, so I'm not sure if I can mention her name. I'm just going to call her Amy. So Amy has been communicating with me about media stuff about the South African Satanic Church over such a long period of time. And we never met in person because of COVID and all the interviews was online, etc. So I did this interview and after the interview, this lady came to me. And in this interview, I said, I don't believe in Jesus. And I don't believe that Jesus Christ exists because I didn't. And she came to me after the interview, after I said that. And she hugged me and she held me in a way that I've never so powerful been loved that's all she did she didn't say anything she just said it's nice to finally meet you in person and she just hugged me and she held me and a week later through whatsapp through a status I saw this woman is a Christian I couldn't believe it because I've never literally her hugging him had a christian this. do that i've never had i've never experienced a christian showing that much love and acceptance unconditionally after i've said the things i've said she did that and it stayed with me i i just like i said oh okay cool she's a christian whatever and then a week later and I don't want to I don't want to talk about Satanism I don't want to listen I don't want to talk say here, about the details of it but in the occult there is certain rituals that you do so he's talking about rituals to ascend now. to the top of a pyramid and you can only do a certain amount at a time and after that interview after that interview, I had a meeting with council members at the, at the church and they said, okay, great, now we've done all these interviews and people know and it's growing, Satanism is growing and believe me, people, it is. It's growing. And I had to do a ritual by myself to see what is the next step? What is the next thing? How do I get more, more power, more influence? And I did this ritual and I opened myself up. And Jesus. Wow, in the middle of a ritual. Appeared. And I was extremely cocky. And I said, whatever, if you are Jesus, 
You need to prove it. And he flooded me with the most beautiful love and energy. And I recognized it immediately because that woman at the radio station showed it to me. That's how I recognized the love of Christ. Because four people, four Christians showed it, not the others. He says in the beginning of this interview that he's only met four Christians in his entire life that showed him the love of Jesus, the love of God. So what a message to the church, what a message to us that we need to show unconditional love to people. Paul says, associate with the lowly in the world, associate with the humble and show them unconditional love and repay evil with. Did you want me to pause it, Father? Yeah, yeah. Did you say something? Yeah. So before we go any further, let me, let me, I kind of want to. Yeah, I, I, this is, this is, this was, this is what I want. I was like, mm. well, first of all, the ritual worked. I was, that's exactly, exactly, what the exactly, <laughs> the ritual worked. Exactly, man. <laughs> the ritual, the ritual worked, you know, um, everyone's going to forgive me, you know. There's this song by Black Sabbath called NIB. NIB. And basically, one of the lyrics in there says, you know, your love for me has just got to be real. Mm -hmm. Before you know the way I'm going to feel. I'm going to feel right. Uh, Satan, by the way, speaking. <laughs> um, let me, let me, let me give you. And everyone's gonna be like, just, just keep in context everything we've been talking about here on the Royal Path and these things. So just understand, for me to pull out a Black Sabbath lyric is absolutely appropriate because this is we're getting meta, right? Um, some people say my love cannot be true. Please believe me, my love, and I'll show you. I will give you those things that you thought unreal. The, su the sun, the moon, the stars, all by my seal. Uh, follow me now and you will not regret leaving the life you led before we met. You are the first to have this love of mine forever with me till the end of the time. Um, so you have to understand something that behold, even the devil comes as an angel of light. Exactly. How much have we talked about St. Nicetus on here and delusion and mm -hmm. prelates? It mm -hmm. says in Matthew 24, 24, that in the last days, there will be many false Christs, right? With signs and working of wonders. In fact, let me pull it up real quick. God forbid a priest mis misquotes scripture. Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Let me tell you something. Homeboy was like, oh, so powerful. The oh, it is great, powerful. It is, it is powerful. He, the only great <laughs> sign, exactly. The only great sign he needed was just like, that's this is a huge sign. A Satanist being moved, right? The power of emotion, right? And, and I, 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 I have no doubt that, that Mr. Rygar believes that he's encountered Christ because he has encountered a Christ, right? Um, but, yes. Yeah. And the thing is, there's some context here that like maybe we should pull up more of the video and kind of start going through it because there's, as you go further past, because this is the way it works, the initial grab that pulls everyone, it pulled me at first too, is the emotion. You're like, oh man, you know, you're feeling the emotion. But see, that's the trick. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will just stay there, right? Because once you're in that place of emotion, your faculties to discern become disarmed in many ways. So 
forgive me, I just kind of want to put it to you like this, right? We talked about this video has got 70,000 plus views just in a couple of days. And this is just one of many reaction videos to the original video. So just, just think about these numbers, right? And think about most of these numbers. The ones that I've seen are all these churches, right? Yep. Look at this, look at this, look at Jesus, look, look at all this, right? So yep. it's getting into the water. Are you, are you following me? Okay. Yep. So as an Orthodox priest, number one, and on top of that, everyone who's watching knows like an Orthodox priest who's like, you know, ringing, you know, the bells on the, on, on the, on the, on the wall. Hey, we got a problem, right? So what I'm trying to say is I always have my antenna up. Mm -hmm. So even for me, it wasn't until about halfway, about 15, 20 minutes, right? So like a 25, now 15 minutes in the video that I started going, uh, something's wrong. Something, are you following me? Yeah. So, so that's me. And I'm, that, I'm not saying that in a, I'm saying like to sober us all up. That's me. It took me just a little bit. I didn't have a, a quick like, oh, this is right. Think of all the people just swallowing this thing whole. Not 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 discerning. Not even putting a filter on. Most people don't even have a te don't have the teaching of prelist. So it's just like mm -hmm. if, Jesus. It feels, if it feels good, it's got to be God. And I I want to back up to something you said, Father, because I think that is enormously. I just if I could get. I don't know if I could just, I, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything, but the, the emotions disarming your discernment. I think that is mm -hmm. so incredible because how often is the argument used? Like is an emotional argument used like over and over. And it's just like, I was talking with, I was talking with a brother today from the church and he was kind of talking about transgender stuff. And he was like, you know, he, he wasn't exactly on base about it. And it just kept coming back to like, I feel I'm getting feedback. Like, like, you know, he talks about prayer and it's just like, and I'm getting feedback and like, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just so like, I, I don't know. I should have. Yeah, well, well, hold on. This is a, this is a big part of it too, because I realized today I'm like, a lot of shots have been fired over the bow the last couple of days. So I'm firing back officially. Okay. I'm gonna say some stuff in this episode. I'll say first of all, I'm willing to. I'm willing to. I'm open to be corrected. Right? Okay. But I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say this week. So there's lots going on here, and there's some threads that are that are inescapable, and I'm just gonna throw them out now. And, and I, I want to throw them out because I want to say them and then we can kind of come back to them because I don't want them to get lost, right? But perennialism is one of them, mm. okay? The other one is the way being made, these forerunners, right? Because yes, we're seeing false Christ, but we're also seeing these anti-John the Baptists who are making a way. Mm -hmm. And they're making, they're making a way for lots of things perennialism but they're also making way and and i'm just gonna say it right but there is a certain lifestyle has to be made acceptable by the masses it has to be right mm -hmm. including more importantly christians and orthodox christians and i'll tell you why because the ac the fathers are all very clear on this the ac is going to have disdain for women if you understand what that means. Yep. AC being antichrist. Antichrist is going to have a disdainful man. Antichrist is going to be a homosexual. Yep. Fathers are clear on that. Let that truth bomb. And then one second, Father, just for people who are just listening, anti means in place of rather than opposed to. For, you know, for the people who maybe this is like the first episode or whatever. So when Father is saying anti anti John the Baptist, he's talking about in place of John the Baptist, mm -hmm. not not, not against the opposite. It, but trying to be in the place, of it, right? Yeah. So when you understand that the it, the absolute necessity for the mass of people to accept that mm -hmm. as virtuous, it's necessary. 
Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's particularly necessary for those who would be the elect, quote unquote. It's necessary, right? So don't be surprised when we move from, you know, uh, uh, pr- Passion Month, you know, we're now moving into the yeah. second month of Passion Month. What in the world, right? From one day to a week to a month, now going on two months. So, and, and this is important because when we get, if we go further into this video. Wait, Father, just so that people understood, we're just trying to not, like, that's a, that's a, when you say passion, you're not talking about the passion of Christ. You're talking about a particular passion. Yeah, yeah. A particular passion that is meaning one of the, of one of the passions, a sin. Yeah. That is being promoted. Correct. And it's, and it's pride. It's pride. It's the worst, it's the worst of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps. Yes. Would we sure. say it's the worst? Yes. Yes. yes it's the worst. Yes. yes. So, and it's the worst because it's the one that cuts you off. <laughs> That's right. Because because the pride pride cannot be corrected. So, anyways, um, but this is a running thread because Mr. Rygar, this is one of his clearly, videos. and the, and and clearly, clearly, and he makes it, and in his in this video. He makes the case that it's doesn't matter. And he gets really, he gets starts pressing on it. And you start seeing where people, you see the setup. Because all the people who are on the fence, whatever, you know, so many of them. And and listen, just by proxy, people can't even hear this now, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's there's people who maybe even watch the show and they like they can't hear what I'm saying right now. That's where we're at. Father, because- if I may, if I may. Like this one, this one really for me, just because of my background, like in seduction, very much like I, I, I got a a tinge of like this whole situation really for me speaks to me of what my repentance is so much about, right? Because this thing that he's describing as love is not love. That's not what he's describing. What he's describing is the feeling of someone accepting him for who he is. In other words, accept, accepting him in his error. Mm-hmm. And I know that like that, if there's anything that was the key role that I played in terms of as a seducer in seduction, that was it. That people felt like they could tell me the worst, most wicked, most sinful things that they did and that I would accept them. And people said this to me and, and, and they interpreted that as love. And that's why he says unconditional, right? And it's like, yeah, the devil will give you that. Like the devil will accept you in your wickedness. Of course he will. Jesus does it. <laughs> that's the whole point, right? right? He right. loves you. The that's father right. loves you but he's not going to accept your wicked ways. He's going to correct you, but he's not going to say, Oh, that's perfectly acceptable. Correct. And remember, this is is the key thing because what we say is, well, what is love? Right. This this is a whole other thing about this thing about emotion. This thing about emotion. It's intoxicating. It's intoxicating. I, Mm -hmm. I will just tell you, uh, and lots of people could refer. I spent so much time, trying to give my spiritual children emotional tools to help them navigate emotionalism and to grow an emotional maturity because you can't even step into the arena of spirituality if you don't deal with it. Because this is, this is one of the key things with delusion and seduction. This is how people stay entrenched in gluttony because of their emotions, they feel bad. I need to get out of this bad feeling. I'm going to overeat. I need to have this bad feeling. I need to have a sexual encounter. I need to have mm-hmm. this bad feeling. I need to fill in the blank. I need to get high. I need to drink. Whatever it is. It's all welcome feelings. to welcome to my entire adult life. Basically, it's all feelings. Mm-hmm. And God says, "I love you. Let the purification begin." Right. And that's, that's why this is so frightening. 
because well, what we're seeing, we haven't even gone even further in the video. I mean, we could, I, I, however you guys want to go. Do you, now. do you want to? Let's go. Let's, uh, we Let's can. Go a little bit further. Let's go. A little okay. Further. I think the stage has been set now. Okay. The love and evil for good. And this is literally what led him to So I recognized it. I'm going to change specs. Sorry. Because transition is not transition apparently anymore. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. I, I love this. Recognized it immediately because four people showed it to me and I didn't understand it at the time. I couldn't understand it because, like I said, I didn't believe. Even when I was in Christian ministry almost two years ago, 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, he was in Christian ministry. You, you think you believe things and you're okay. So there's a book that tells you certain things and therefore it's that. I never knew it until a month or two ago. And I could recognize it because there's people, there's four people who showed it to me. And it's not the people who fight you and they declare spiritual warfare and they do things and it's not, that's not the love of Christ. The love of Christ is unconditional. We literally just taught in Romans last night that says we bless those, we don't curse them. So guys, our job as Christians is not to be sending curses to these people, not to be trying to attack these people with, you know, curses and send spells at them, back at them and return to sender. Paul says we bless them, we love them. Those that persecute us, Jesus said you turn the other cheek when they slap one cheek. When they take something from you, you give them something else. So is there an element of spiritual warfare? Of course there is, but we're not warring against these people. We're warring against spiritual powers. Very and important note. Positive. For the last month, I've been having conversations, real conversations you say positive, positive? with yeah. God. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So the other thing in here, when, when I was going through, it's like, okay, the emotion hits you. This is how, this is how it works for everyone. You're watching this and you, you always, you want the best. You, of course, we're always looking for, I mean, who wouldn't want to hear of like a Satanist being pulled out? Like, of course, especially for me, it's like, yes, right? But the emotionalism hits and, you, and that brings that first level of defenses down of, of discerning okay and then there's things that he's saying that are true they're true they're aspects of truth right but those aspects of truth they also begin to kind of like reinforce a sense of getting comfortable and, and beginning to accept and, and hear these because Right when you pause, he starts saying, "I've been having these conversations with God." Yeah, yeah, yeah. In what? How? Going back to that ritual again? Okay. <laughs> so let's let's bring the clip back up, and I want to show you guys something. All right, all right. Look at the poster behind him. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yo, what, what's going on there? Okay, so that poster comes from. It's I don't know. It basically it's connected with the Course in Miracles. Uh which was this, I went through it when I first came, when I first started to kind of pursue, to pursue Christ. Someone gave it to me and almost towards about halfway towards, you know, three quarters of it, I had to put it down. Mm. It, I, I, at the time, I know now, but at the time I couldn't explain it to you except for, forgive me everyone forgive me but that feeling that someone would get if they were being molested or touched inappropriately mm -hmm. this very that i kept getting that feeling as i was going through it and this is spiritual what, grooming it's yeah, spiritual grooming yeah it, it was i i couldn't I, it was just like you yep, know and i, I remember talking telling, about. i remember telling the woman uh the young lady who gave it to me um and, and some context here, 
this is one of the many times that God was, had always been kind of like getting me to be like, you've got to move past wanting to please people. You've got to hear my voice. And right, this, I'm just sharing with you because this is something that we all have to learn to listen. We all have to learn to listen and hear this because it's about to get hard, everybody. Because right now, this, this right here, this is, this is nothing. But you, are going, you would have friends and family who would hear this and be like, this is so hateful what's being said. Look at that man's tears. Look at his, Jesus came to him. How dare you, blah, blah, blah. It's beginning. Mm -hmm. It's beginning. And if you don't learn to not care about really deal with vain, with vainglory. If you don't learn to care to not, if you don't learn to not care about these things, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. So anyways, that poster back behind him is associated with Course in Miracles. May I, may I, uh, it, I can't did, really... you know, it's not put there accidentally. Like oh, he's clearly yeah. placed it, you know. Oh, um, and somebody needs to understand that a Satanist, for, for someone in the church of Satan, especially someone who's like been in it and is like it amongst their clergy, absolutely nothing in, in that frame and nothing that he's doing is by accident. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that, that is placed there is absolutely 100% on purpose. Mm -hmm. Every single thing there. Mm -hmm. um, Father, in scripture, isn't there like some Roman centurions or something like that, which ask saint john the baptist to baptize them and he's like you're not really repentant like it, it like um i thought i remembered like it was going i was listening to a podcast and like they basically say like we want to repent and saint john the forerunner was like i don't believe you like basically saying like yeah you're using like an emotional thing to try and say like you want to have this big repentance i'm going to give you baptism and then you'll go out and do the same thing again I can't remember, and maybe I'm way off base here, but I thought I remember that, like that, um, that he basically had discernment in saying, like, no, that's that's not, I, I, it's not good enough. Well, it says, not, you know, it was the part where he speaks to the crowds about, you know, you brood of vipers who warned you to come mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. flee from the coming wrath, right? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. So he's talking to, I don't, I don't know about the Roman centurion part. Okay, but, I made it, maybe that's where I'm yeah, wrong. No, because he he only preached to the Jews. He didn't preach to any Gentiles, but. Oh, um, that's important. Okay. But, but yeah, that was the thing. He's like, yeah, you're not, you have to bear fruits of repentance, which that's a great segue because if you keep going in there, there's no, there's not an ounce of repentance in this video. Mm -hmm. Because even, let's get into it. Because even when he says, I don't want to talk about Satanism. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna talk to you about the occult. Don't do it. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. evil and wrong, and I was wrong when I did it. I'm gonna talk to you about drugs. Don't do it. It was evil and wrong when I did it. There you go. You know, like repentance, repentance, repentance. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. And these things that we will never, never understand with our cognitive minds. We will never understand it. Which is true. And I've had people, obviously, in the last few weeks say, you know what, it's cognitive dissonance and whatever, like intellectual things. And I've studied this and that. so have I. I, I. I've been an atheist for most of my life. I've been a Satanist for four, five years. So I understand where a lot of those people come from. But when you experience it, it is something different. And again, I'm not here to attack people, but I want to get a few things off my chest. I I have for a long time believed that I am not worthy wow. of God's grace because I'm gay and because I have certain abilities. So people 
made me believe for a very long time I'm not worthy of that. Let me tell you something today. Pause. The kingdom of God Hold is on. not a gated community. Okay. Pause. You don't, you don't have to pull it. Like, like, I don't know. Did you catch that? And I have certain abilities. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. He's talking about divination. What's he talking yeah, about? Yeah. 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 He's talking about he divination, the ability, psychic abilities, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's just be clear. The Book of Acts, the possessed girl following Paul around saying, oh, you you know, apostles of Christ. But And Paul turns around and says, shut up and get out of the girl, you demon. Like, mm -hmm. these spirits can tell the truth, too. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that's, not, the, that, that's mm -hmm. not the thing, you know? But... But this is this is this is what people need to understand. Uh, for an Orthodox Christian to fall into this, it's because you weren't taught, but it's in our teaching. But everywhere outside of our confession, it's not the teaching. So And what is the, the teaching that you're saying, Father? The the divination discernment, thing? discernment, prelist. Oh, gotcha. That like, you know, when we the, the creed is an exorcism. Right. So there's many Christs. <laughs> right. This is Father. Can can we like it that 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 the creed comes up as an exorcism? When you first said that, to, you said that to me very early on. You you you, you taught me that. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. I really I really didn't get it. I haven't got. I didn't get it until recently. And honestly, ex I didn't really get it. I think, or maybe it's just that it's providential that I had a conversation today and it was, the, the creed came up as like, it's the definition. <laughs> like the, the creed is, I mean, we've been, our, our, what we've done here, like you've, you've helped to catechize me and Andrew and people who have been watching through the creed and my catechism was through the creed, but it's like, it's so powerful and, and and it's also crazy to me that like why is why is the creed how are there people who are christians who don't who are like lifelong christian mm -hmm. they'll tell you all about they've read all in the bible and they could quote passages and all of this and you're like the the nicene creed and they're like what mm -hmm. what is that that's right where it's like oh it's the thing that by which you know whether or not you're a Christian. That's right. Like, That's if you right. can say this and it's the truth, you are a Christian. The fathers put this there so that we would know whether or not we were a Christian. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so then the oh, question is, like, why were you not taught this? That should give you some pause. Just just a little thought. I just want to just a little fun kind of like thing, little whoop whoop, just to throw out to everybody. You find yourself in a bad position, right? There's certain things you can do, right? And some of you will know what I'm talking about. You can't move at night. Make the sign of the cross with your tongue. Make the sign of the cross with your eyes, right? Say the Jesus prayer. But guess what? If you really want to pull out an atom bomb, you start busting out that creed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You start busting out that creed, you know. Um, I'm telling you, it's 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 a, it's a, it's an underused, underestimated uh, weapon in our arsenal for sure. But anyways, and I creed, can say yeah. this really quick that there's a video of a band. I think they're in Sweden or something like that. And they are in the subway station. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't remember what it is, but they sing like uh, God, the great engineer or something like that. And every time I listen to that video in this, how I, I don't know, like it seems like it's probably like a couple hundred year old train station with this like ancient, like, I don't know, Protestant hymn, not ancient, like three or 400. It gives me this sense of like, man, as an American, I really don't have this kind of heritage, you know, I don't have like this kind of like unifying, like, um, I, I don't have this kind of like something to fall back on. A lot of my stuff is within the last hundred years, like culturally speaking. 
but this creed i've had that not a, a spiritual experience but like i mean a spiritual but not like this guy's having um i i just just like it's like the hollowed like voices of the millions upon billions of christians who've like stood together and said this creed and i get to be so lucky as to say this creed as well i mean like i mean the it's like when you're reading communion prayers it's just like the thousands of years behind these words is so powerful and it transcends any culture it, it transcends that because it's like you all find this like thing to hook into and as an american that is few and far between for me and that's so that's a key say. thing because what you're talking about is another trap because mm -hmm. the christ that this rygar guy has encountered just like the christ that jordan peterson is bringing to people it's a it's a christ that's relevant it's a christ that will kind of like mm -hmm. to undo you know and fix those gaps that people have right okay okay so sure let's, let's, yeah. let's see what else he's got on that video he's got. okay here we go the kingdom of god is open Come to on. everybody it's called grace it's called grace people and somebody forwarded me i want to talk about this stuff somebody forwarded right me there. i mean forgive a video me forgive over me. the weekend like you know when we when he says the kingdom of god is open to everybody that's true it is it is open to everybody but how how do you enter in you know what i mean and again we talked about this before maybe perhaps with like grace like we say the term even you know um this gentleman here, deliverance guy, he's going to say, you know, when they say grace and we say grace, they don't mean the same thing. Mm. When, when they say grace, it, it's more akin to when we say mercy, maybe. But when we say grace and, uh, you know, hopefully most of you listening know this already, but if you don't, I'm going to tell you and here you go. When we say grace as Orthodox Christians, we're not talking about unmerited favor. We're not talking about a free gift. Yes, it's free in the sense that, you know, God gives it, you couldn't earn it even if you wanted to. But when we say grace, we're talking about God's energy. Mm -hmm. God's energy, right? And that, that energy is particular. And that, that energy is particular and has particular effects on people. And here's the thing. This is why we look to the fathers because we have millennia of fathers who have received grace and they tell us what is of God and what isn't of God. And that's the means by which we begin to discern our own experiences and the things that we would hear. And I'm telling you, patristically speaking, what he's sharing about his experience with Christ, it doesn't match up with what the fathers taught. It doesn't match up with what Silouan experienced. It doesn't match up with, you know, the countless hagiographical accounts that we have when people encounter Christ. It's not matching up. And he just threw that and I'm gay in there as well. Like, I know that was last time, but like, I, I don't know, like, imagine like how powerful tool that's going to be used, like in the next couple of years and be like, here's, it has, it has to be used. That's no, it's, 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 it's being used. It sure. Used. But like <laughs> this particular used. account, well, here we have this guy who is a gay satanic priest and he's encountering Christ. So maybe God doesn't really care so much if you're gay or not, you know? Well, and, like, he, and he didn't cease to be gay, nor did he cease to be a satanic priest after yeah. this encounter. And that's really what he's saying here. Like, that's the most disturbing part about this. And the fact that this dude who claims to be a Christian is like, oh, yeah, amen, brother, is like, he's like, no, you can have God's grace, even if you are a satanic priest a gay satanic priest who continues to be a gay satanic priest. Uh, it's not a gated community. Like it's open for, it's open for everyone. Man. And if well, you continue to do that. Yes. And, and, and let's keep going because I don't know, I don't know how much this, how much um, youth pastor guy is going to have in there, but I'm going to tell you something. Um, that guy starts having some, some words for the quote unquote church. Right. 
I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to misquote, but like, he basically, he all but says like, I'm not going to go to church and this and this and that, you know? See? So let's, let's, let's see what else he says. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Here we go. So guys, I want to stop it there because the full video is like 50 something minutes and I'll link it down below. We need to be praying for him. We need to pr be praying that God continues to reach him, that God continues to convict him, that God would continue to use him. A lot of Christians are saying, oh, what about this or what about that or pointing this out? This is what we're praying for, guys, for these people to get saved, for people in this level to get saved. So I'm praying for him. I'm rooting for him. I'm going to reach out to him, say, hey, if there's anything you need, let me know. I'm here to support. I'm here to help because this is what we're praying for. This is not the time to be a Pharisee, to be a Sadducee to point this out or this out or this is wrong in theology that's wrong in theology hey when you got saved there was a bunch of stuff wrong in your theology our job as believers is to pray is to pray that God would use and God would reach and that God would continue to convict and God would continue to change and so man I'm excited about this news I wanted to bring you guys this video and show you this because we celebrate this is what we pray for this is what we're believing God for to save those in high levels of the satanic church in Hollywood in cele celebrity world religious people doesn't matter this is our job is to pray for these people is to be in their corner so i want you to pray for rian i want you to continue to lift him up in prayer and believe that god's going to establish his will in his life let me know what you thought about this. sure Can I, say I don't think i know i don't think this guy understands what the word convict means in this con context because what he described was not being convicted mm -mm. at all he was what he described was that his wickedness was being accepted by Jesus, mm -hmm. yes. and it's like that's oh, how you know it's I not Jesus. I, realized, I don't yeah. think I realized that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what the, sure. his message is. Sure. Yeah. So do whatever you want. It's it doesn't matter. Which is which is Crowley. Yes. That's he's he's and that's why I say like, I was just like, oh, this is. <laughs> It's, it's so bad. Like, I don't want to say this, but like, I have to say this. This is something I would do. Sure. Like that I would have done, right? The previous, the previous wicked occult me, this is the exact type of behavior that I would, would have done in service of the left-hand path. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like when I saw him doing this, I was like, oh, I would have done that. Mm -hmm. and, and walked away laughing walked away like it's i wonder yeah i wonder if this guy is like an anti-father turbo i'm gonna say that he kind of looks like father turbo a little bit with the tattoos and the glasses <laughs> and the goatee and stuff and like i mean he's probably fairly knowledgeable of everything that's happening you know yeah. like so he, he you know like you know maybe he'll start his own little podcast calls like the whatever path you know like <laughs> anything goes so, you know, uh, that portion about like praying and all the stuff, like, and, and again, you know, um, the youth pastor guy, whatever, like, God bless him. Like, this is, this is part of the problem. This is the setup, right? Because um, this, is why I have, this is why households are falling apart. This is why our society is falling apart. It's like, you call something out, you're, you don't have love, you're wrong that's not Christian, you're not loving. And it's like, remember our first episode, maybe our second one, I, what did I say to you guys about being a father, right? Like a father does the hard things, like mm -hmm. that's, you know what I mean? Episode two. Everyone. So this, this is antithetical to what the history of mankind, let alone our tradition is, has said about what it means to be a father and all these things, what, it, what love is, right? What love is. And so, it's a real setup because like, yeah, praying for someone, and I'll tell you, God, God does want Rygar, Rygan, um, whatever, to, to come to, I mean, God desires that all men would come to salvation, right? And God can, and you can, and, and I'm sure would use this experience in his life, but I'm just telling you, there's a big difference between that and then me saying, watch out, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't, this isn't what you think it is, and this is why. Because this transitions, I mean, I don't know if we need to go any further, but this transitions us into what happened uh, just a couple days after, a couple days after this came out. Lord have mercy. Which is 
the archbishop for the GOA, the Greek Orthodox Church in America. Ugh. Yeah. There you go. That's better. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, first gay couple to baptize their children in Greece, presided by Archbishop Elfid. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. 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 Um, anyway, uh, he, uh, but from what I understand, not canonical, did not go over well with his higher ups. From what I understand. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what it was is he was in someone else's diocese in Greece and had said, oh, this is the reason, but really it was like, he wouldn't say, he, he didn't say like, hey, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna baptize these kids for this for this gay couple. You know, that's apparently the story essentially. This bishop's like, hey, you're in my diocese, meaning these guys, the suburb they live in, another hierarch, that's his territory. And so a hierarch, that's his, his, that's his territory. So um, Archbishop of the Pephoros would have to come and say, hey, I'm doing this and that, but he did, but didn't give the full detail. So this other hierarch saying like, if I had known that, I wouldn't have allowed this to happen, essentially. And we, God bless him, I hope that's the case, you know? But this, which made the rounds real quick too, just came out like a day or two after Rygar's video or Rygan, whatever. So- What on earth? What? This is so- it's so, it's so wild. It's so wild. Can I just say, and I'll, I'll take the hate, not one of those women is dressed appropriately. Oh, Thank it's never church. Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. I'll, of course. I'll take the hate. That's fine. I mean, I, I am just noticing that there is not a head covering to be seen. Exactly. Oh, exactly. I mean, look, okay. We, we could go on and on about that. I mean, it's so <laughs> tough. It's so tough seeing the pictures of the thing in the church. It's just like, Holding an icon. Holding uh, an icon. No head covering. It's just, it's just the bare, bare midriff. <laughs> multiple women with the bare midriff. I just, it's. And just a little poop eaten grin. In front of the yeah. iconostasis, too. Yeah. yeah, I just. So, so did you catch the other guy, too? And I, and something like, this is not the time to be pharisaical, blah, 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 blah. You know, yep. and it's like. Yep. You, you see the setup mm -hmm. you see the setup and it's just like i would just i always encourage everyone don't even bother anymore don't don't bother to try to like put some mustard and mayonnaise on it you know what i mean don't don't bother hold to the truth and those who want those who are thirsty for water and for real meat give it to them everyone else don't worry about it because at this point that's that's the trick where it's just like you know that kind of squirmy thing where you're like i don't want to offend but blah 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 we don't we don't have time for them anymore because it, it's about to get really really hot you know um and this this thread that's there it was so interesting because the day that I got the video and the video started circling around in our community. It was the day that there was that great talk. I recommend everyone to listen to it. Uh, Father Peter and Father uh, Siloam yeah, great. on perennialism, which I mean, everything's there now. You know, it's so set up to where the world is presented. The world now has a facade of a anti Christ an anti-orthodoxy that can say this is orthodoxy see we we're we are the church of you know because Elder before she marched with BLM and he's done this now and he well he denied importantly he denied uh people religious exemptions yeah for for the poke yeah, yeah. he so said we will yeah. not and I will not allow anyone yeah in my diocese, which means America, because mm -hmm. he's the Archbishop of America, right? Of North yep. America? Yep, yep. And he said, we will ne there will be no religious exemptions to the Pope. Yeah. So no religious exemptions, Marsha BLM has done this 
Was he the guy that said that Mary's choice was important? That the mother of God's choice was important? Yeah, he's the one who's done the double the talking on both both sides about affirming life, but also women's choice. Like, which, by the way, are you know, may God grant Bishop Longing many years. You know, Bishop Longing, Metropolitan Joseph of the Antiochian Archdiocese, and I think maybe one or two other bishops. Which is sad. Only like a handful of bishops put a statement out basically condemning his double-minded speech on glory to um, God abortion glory so God. this is this is this is where we're at and you know the the reality is is that um this thread these these threads are all in place in which a very easy switch can happen where the exteriors of the church the externals of the church don't even need to be messed with because look right there yeah you, the externals of the church don't have to be messed with sure right? you know what's interesting because the other i mean and this was today with jordan peterson and his message to the church mm -hmm. you know where he said where he said the church no his message to the church is right which is already like there's not one church right, right. he's like and you're corrupt, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're outdated. These, you need to let my sons in to fix you up. That's right. You can fix them up and they can fix you up because you're yeah. corrupt and outdated. But what's interesting, and it, this is just clicking off to me because it's totally related. Just last week, the same time this was going on, he released a thing with Dave Rubin that was about gay parenting. Hmm. How should you get like advice on gay parenting? From Jordan Peterson, with with his buddy Dave Rubin, who's been opening, who's who's his opening act, who was his opening act for his whole throughout, and it's like, wait a minute, and then he's going to give a message to the churches. Yeah, I mean, and here, to Islam. I mean, here here's the thing. Like, I'm just, you know, I hope some of my I hope I hope maybe this may get around, but I hope if if I have any brothers that hear this, any priests that might hear this, like. I've been trying to gently warn people, you know, and talk to them about Peterson. It's becoming serious. Yeah. People, like Orthodox folk, and if you're clergy out there, if you got the, like, you need to start really paying attention because, because now your exchange of what you might conceive to be a uh, cultural collateral of influence, you know, um, He's got the people's ears and he's nasty in the right way. You know what I mean? Like, it's very dangerous because now the things that he's saying, you know, uh, it becomes part of what you begin to swallow, people swallow in whole. And it's not correct what he's saying. And, yeah. we, and we have to be very careful and, and really hold that line. Because I'm going to tell you something. Him talking about the logos, people go, he's talking about the logos. It doesn't mean anything uh you know john <laughs> john the evangelist john basically as in many ways as a tool of apologetics that was not the first time the logos was talked about like that was a, that was a, a concept that the ancient greek mind had about the logos right but john just like all the great orthodox evangelists takes what is happening and begins to speak to the people right so it's why am i saying this because when people people god forbid orthodox so go he says logos and cry like that doesn't mean anything because so when, when he's saying logos to you he's speaking logos in a more from a pagan perspective than it is an actual christian perspective right in regards of you know a kind of mythology and symbol and these things and aren't actual we have to really open our eyes what's happening because it's happening quick right yeah. it's, ha it's, it's it's happening quick and it's happening in such a way that where everyone's receiving it via this medium and this medium is also ramping up the sense of the boogeyman and all these things that are happening so it's just like people are grabbing for anything to get their moorings but they're grabbing for the wrong thing yes they're in a panic and that's intentional that's it, totally intentional it's, it's very intentional and you know
Peterson, like, first of all, why does this guy think that he can come and lecture everybody? Like he has the truth, like he knows what's true. He's gonna lecture everybody. Muslims, Christians, do what I say because I'm the one who got it right. You guys are all backwards and whatever. You, you guys have to hear what I'm saying on this. Like, sounds like I mean, fa Father, for, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. He didn't have a message to Christians. That I might even be like, okay, because you're going to talk to Christian individuals. Churches. He had a message to the church. Right. Right. Which is a whole other thing. Because <laughs> you can talk to, I'll take your advice as a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Even if you're an atheist, you might be able to point out to me where I'm failing as a Christian. That's right. But for you to have a message to the church. Right. Well, it was almost like he's like, he might as well sat down and said, listen, I'm going to give you my digital epistles. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, exactly. that's basically yeah. what he's saying. He's like, I, I'm, yes. I'm just as good as Paul. And I'm going to tell you this. And I, people may, you can roll your eyes all you want. I'm telling you, don't like, don't listen to how he says it or who's saying it. Listen to the words he's actually saying, right? It's super important to do that. Because let me just say this other thing. He came out and you shared this with the Cyprian, this came out and he gave this whole thing about like, he was chastising the Russian Orthodox Church for her stance on Ukraine. I was like, yeah. you're insane, man. You're Earth, insane. Fa Father, forgive me. Again, you're insane. I, I don't want to minimize it. It's important, the context. He's talking about the war in Ukraine. He says what Vladimir Putin did was unconscionable. But the, the participation and collusion of the Russian Orthodox Church was more the most unforgivable yeah. thing that gonna, anyone had done. I'm going to pull up the, the most quote. unforgivable thing. I'm going to pull up the quote. I got it was right there. It's in, but father, I hadn't even made that connection the the title of his thing of saying message to the churches yeah yeah it is anti saint paul it is because it is. saint paul's saint paul's epistles were the message to the churches that's right that's right i hadn't it, even it hadn't it, even occurred to me that he's saying he's saint paul now and that's that's it that's it yeah it's incredible yeah, and yeah. at the same time that he and i, and I mean this is going to people are going to hate me for this at the same time as he signs a deal with the daily wire you know, which has done some good conservative things. But at the end of the day, the Daily Wire is not a Christian organization. It is not a Christian at the head of, of the Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. It is an Orthodox it something, but Orthodox. it is not an Orthodox Christian. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the quote here was, we, you sent it to us on the 11th, and that was, so it was like the 9th or something. But just so we have the context it was from his own personal twitter i think it was maybe but well he's banned from twitter now it was from well, a youtube he is from his youtube he posted it as text uh, on youtube thank you yeah. thank you uh, i want to say at the outset that i think what putin has done is unconscionable god only knows what the impact will be as all four of the horsemen of the apocalypse are on the march again i think that the collusion of the leadership of the russian Orthodox church is even more unforgivable um it's <laughs> yeah it is incredible where we're at in the sense that um these these traps are really beginning to spring you know and, and i can tell you they're beginning to spring because i don't want to get into it but you know there's priests you know, who are out there very publicly talking about how they don't want to commemorate Patriarch Kirill and like all just, just madness, madness, you know, rogue nuns, one rogue, well, I should say one rogue nun, you know, out there just speaking madness about all of this and people applauding her and just, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it's, if I, if I may, if I may, yeah. on that, again, I just, just in case people are like, well, what's the big deal? He's just comment like, people should stop and think, where did the Russian Orthodox Church come into that? It's like, he's going out, this is someone who's going out of his way 
to vehemently criticize the church. Like he's going out of his way to do it. Like he, he did, there was no reason to bring the Russian Orthodox church into that. Zero. And what does he even know about the Russian Orthodox church's That's stance nice on thing. any of this? Does he speak Russian? Is he part of the church? Has he like, how, yeah, what does, right. is he reading? Is he reading church? Right. Um, orthodox right. periodicals and, like right. what, what the hell is he talking about right. Excuse and, here's me. The, and here's the other side of that too is by default he is affirming the movement of the schismatic ukrainian church and the, yes. and, and the criminal um uh ep yeah right the the ecumenical patriarch and the, so he's basically he's essentially condoning this look it isn't a big thing for for Dr. JP to throw out both sides. Why, why, we do it every week, right? Bring up the other side of it. Bring up how unconscionable it is for both sides, whatever. Like, surely a professor, a tenured professor like him has to have some interdisciplinary aspect in regards to understanding geopolitics. Surely he does, right? So surely he must know about the Donbass and NATO and all that stuff, right? And like I'm just saying, it's part of it. Like if you're going to say that, you have to look at the whole picture. And so, this this is all of this is being brought up because what I what what I'm trying to get out, get across to everyone is like the deception isn't coming; it's here. Hmm. It's, it's here. Really understand what's happening. And this thing over identity and you know, basically the denial of the gift of God, which is a free will, a free will, a free will, which is really what it means to have the image of God. This is God's gift to us. And this is what people never understand about what's being trampled under. Because there, this whole thing of like, you're, I don't understand, you know, the gay thing and all that stuff. Let's just make it really clear. We're human beings. And we all struggle with our passions, all of us. But the, the trick is, uh, that's what we do as humans. We struggle against them, no matter what they are. And even though we may fail, that's not the point. The point is that we, we engage in the battle, right? And I just want to say it's important to understand that because the giving over of oneself to licentiousness, <laughs> it's not okay for any of us. For any of us, right? Because gay, God gay, is, gay or straight, right? I think that that's the straight. thing that's I think that's the thing that's often missed in here is that and I and I even missed it. Honestly, until becoming Orthodox, I even missed it because it's misrepresented in American Christianity, like Westboro Baptist Church and all of that. Is that it's like, no, 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 no. If you were doing this and the same types of behavior, if you were having pride in your, which I did at a certain point, I was the manifestation of it at a certain point in my life. If you're having pride in heterosexual fornication mm -hmm. and licentious sexual behavior, that's, that's, I mean, that's a, I, I'm not ranking sins, but that is like yeah. that suicide, spiritual suicide to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's like, yeah, it would be spirit. It's spiritual suicide if a straight person does it too. That's right. That's the, early, right. the early canons of the church, the canons of the church, they actually treated uh, uh, adultery uh, when you're married much more harshly than they did sodomy. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, I don't remember exactly the years, but something like 20 years penance. You know, and this just this is just a frame of reference, but I mean, like cheating on your wife or your husband, uh, that was like I was a much longer penance than sodomy was. I mean, that was a much longer penance. Um, so, uh, in in uh, that that in it, you know, and even the harshest of people I've heard, you know, not not the harshest, but like even some of the most stern who talk on the subject say it is gotten convoluted in America. And I mean, you know, to, to present the royal path, I mean, sure, if, if, if a gay person has never heard this argument right here, uh, and it's, it, it doesn't go anything beyond like it's ucky and it ain't God's will, like then, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know where that, 
where it's not convincing. It's not, not convincing, convincing, right? And it's not convincing because it's not the truth because it, it's it's absent of fullness, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, is we're talking about salvation. Mm -hmm. we're talking about the saving of a soul. Like that human soul is precious. And in order for it to be redeemed, in order for it to be brought brought back to its original purpose and its use, it has to be done in a way that that is done through enlightenment and love and engaging the free will. God never transgresses the free will, right? And so the thing is, is that this desire to want to return to a place of holiness and, and understanding what that means is not just simple moral correctness, right? And that's the important part. That that that's sorry, Father. Continue. No, I just want to emphasize that. Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, this is why it's like the gentleman, uh, the youth pastor guy. He's like, you know, we we sh we can't be Pharisees, and we have to, you know, be praying for all these. And I I'm I'm obviously with him, right? But the the portion that he's missing is is this other side of it which is really the problem, right? Because most people, right? Like none of us here, are, you know, I'm not like get the pitchforks and this and that. It's not, it's not that at all, right? Um, so that's not the issue. The issue is what these seductive, it's just, it's false. These things yeah. that aren't true being presented in such a way as truth, they have real ramifications. Because if you love God, you should love God for who he, for who he is and not as you want him to be. Amen. Amen. You know? I mean, my, my just, just speaking on this, per, this personally, I've encountered, so I've encountered a lot of spirits. But what I can say is that even having a glimpse of Christ, there was no thought in my mind except like I, I need to immediately all the other things like it, it was inadequate. Like even at the time having a glimpse of Christ, a whisper, I was drawn to what eventually, I mean, it's, I'm being drawn towards orthodoxy. I'm being drawn towards the church. There's no question in my mind about that. And the other things I'm shedding, right? So like, I can't imagine like to just, like I can't imagine that an individual would say they had an experience of Christ that was to the point that it brought them to, that it shook them to their core and that they're not like the next thing that they do isn't go to church. Like have a desire to go toward the church. I mean, even like, even my patron saint Cyprian of Antioch, like that's his whole story. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's that guy. He's literally that guy. guy. <laughs> he's that guy. He is summoning demons, yeah. princes of hell, well, the devil letting himself, them loose on the, the devil yeah. himself. The devil he's himself. summoning them, then gets attacked by by the devil uses the sign of the cross he doesn't even have an experience of christ of of like christ of a spirit of christ of a spirit of a saint of an angel he just experiences that the that satan himself is scared of the sign of the cross and that's enough for him to want to burn his books and be baptized and this and someone saying oh i had this experience of jesus christ himself showing up and he's See, like, but I'm not going to stop being a Satanist, but I'm not going to go to church, but I'm not going to, you know, here, it doesn't make any sense. Here's this thing, because the other guy, he's like, it's not about theology right now, this and that. It's like, he's, when he said it's correct, it's like, yeah, when you first come to Christ, you're like, all things aren't correct. That's right. But like, there's certain things that aren't. See, when he says theology, it's again, it's like the grace thing. But he says theology is not what we mean by theology. When he says theology, he's talking about academics arguing <laughs> religious philosophy when we say theology we're talking about the experience of holy ones who have prayed that's what we mean when we say theology so it absolutely needs to be theology because i'm gonna tell you something the the <clears throat> 
the if we're gonna go by scripture, right? That's another thing that's you know, uh, some of the some of the shade he threw at the Bible. It's like a book, it's not in a book, but like the scriptures tell us, you know, when someone has an encounter with 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 God, right? Like um, the centurion and his uh, getting back to the actual centurion, not uh, like the like the the centurion who has his whole household um, baptized, right? Like you have this encounter, and then you're brought to the church, and then you're baptized. Like that that aspect of seeking out baptism, that's a natural. Mm -hmm. Jesus won't come to someone and then have them be like, okay, good, peace. Like from here on out, I'm a, like I'm gonna flood you with this feeling. You go out, you got it, boy. You're good. Like God doesn't God doesn't do that. Like, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how I know. Because I'm a baptized Christian Orthodox Christian. That's how I know. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't born in the church. That's how I know. Yeah. Right. And all my spiritual children are, <laughs> they're all people who are not born in the Orthodox Church who are baptized because being Orthodox Christians, right? That's how I know. Because when you actually encounter the Christ, it may take some time, sure, but you, you will be led down a certain path. And to be frank, that leading down that path doesn't have to be that long, right? There, so the measure of, of instruction should be commiserate with the, with the measure of manifestation, if you will, quote unquote, right? Right. None of my spiritual children had Jesus showing the door and like, knock, right? Now, I had something, I had something kind of close to that in the sense of, well, mine was like an inverse of that. Mine was an awareness of evil. But, you know, everyone knows that story of when I walked into that house and I saw that icon. To me, that's just as, that's, not only is it just as good, it's better. Because that icon was an actual true <laughs> revelation of Jesus and that set me down the path towards baptism. That sent me towards the path of saying, I don't want my own ideas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want my own ideas. I want the truth. Right? I don't want, I, I, that's what's missing. Right? And, and that, like, that critique has to be heard because in the last days, there will be many Christs. Yeah. If I can just say this real quick, and may, I, maybe this will help wrap up, I'm not sure. Um, because I think, I, I don't think I'd ever realized how important it was that uh, having an experience and then seeking out baptism, because I mean, that's what happened with me. Um, and I started to get a little bit tripped out, you know, because I was like, oh no, was my experience not genuine? But I just remember like afterward just sitting and like just being, I am such an idiot. Like I'm just such an idiot. Like I'm I just I saw for like the first time just like all the ways that like I my heart is hard and like how I keep people at a distance. And I'm still not, you know, I I would still absolutely at end of days, God's like that wasn't a real experience with me. You know, I'd be like, okay, sure. I'm sorry, you know, I repent. I don't, you know, then I denounce that. But like, um, you know, the, my hardness of heart about how I need to change things need to be different. Like, you know, and it wasn't conviction. Like, that's the, that's conviction. That's real conviction. Okay. All right. So then the, so then I sought out the church, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's that, and, you know, and the rest is the, the beginning, not history like that. You know, you don't father said in his homily, you don't get baptized and then take Eucharist. And then you're just like, that's it. You did it you know, like that's the beginning, that's the beginning of your new life. And, and that's one of the problems I continually run into in my work is this idea of like, you say those seven magical words, and you're good. And I can't tell you how many times I hear somebody say like, that just doesn't feel like quite enough. And when I was younger, I had this experience where, like, I, I brought a friend to a Protestant church, and he was like, I'm a Christian now. And I kept being like, are you sure? Like you, you sh because I felt like there's a part of me that was like, this not enough. It's not enough. Like there's no huge spiritual transformation. Let me, let me, let me interrupt real quick, because let's, let's talk about something just real quick, whatever. Um, it might go a little bit over, but who cares? Right. So like, I'm, I'm going to throw a word out there that no one wants to talk about. Commitment. Mm. Commitment. 
commitment is baked into the Orthodox Church. It's, it's in the very process of initiation. And so this thing of like, are you sure like people have been given this non-committal view of, of, of what it means to be a Christian? It's not a mistake that there's a parallel between the way people approach marriage and sex and the way that they view Christianity. Hmm. Like the real St. Paul, right? Not the anti-St. Paul. The real St. Paul is like, hey, Ephesians 5, um, speaking of marriage as, an, as, you know, an image of Christ in the church, right? So as we become, you know, I mean, quote unquote Christians now, like, yeah, fornication, no problem, whatever. Hey, as long as we cared about each other, that's what counts. That's, that's God knows our heart. Like, what the? <laughs> what? No. So this acceptance of these things, it, 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 it all is layered. And so to unlock one is to unlock the other. And you, you pull one thread and then, and then weaves the other. This is what's happening. So this approach towards, okay, I wanna go back cause I know some people, you know, probably got upset, but I'm gonna take the heat off of Andrew and I'm gonna put it on myself. I'm gonna tell you why it's a problem. We start talking about certain ways in church, right? Because modesty is a spiritual virtue. It has nothing to do with the shame of the woman's body or some sort of patriarchal tool to keep women oppressed or blah, blah, blah. Like you come to my parish and come see me serve the liturgy in Hawaiian shorts and a, and a, and a tank top. I sound good to everybody. How does that sound? Doesn't sound too good. Doesn't sound too good. Why? Right? Let's really start kind of understanding some of these things. You inherently know that it wouldn't be right. It has nothing to do with, you know, well, that's a kind of social construct. Get out of here with that. Right? We're discerning things that are deeper. So the lack of modesty in the temple, it's absurd seeing a quote unquote, I mean, to quote Father Josiah, he's not a priest. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not a hierarch, but to see someone dressed up as one, essentially, to see someone dressed up in a rasso and a cloak, you know, and uh, all this stuff, right? And then like having people like that, you know, it doesn't make sense and it's not supposed to make sense, right? It's not supposed to make sense. That, that's, that's part of the name of the game. But these things are important because we want to come in a spirit of modesty in the temple because our God is a holy God, right? Just these things like that, all of this is just wearing us down, right? Just, it's one more layer, one more layer of armor just to kind of like eventually penetrate the hole. Because that's gotta be the game because you can't come at us direct because a bunch of us would probably be like, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And okay. And this is the thing that I kind of maybe want to end on. And well, they came in. I mean, that's the other thing too. Is like in 2020, it doesn't matter anymore. Because because for these people, remember something. For these people, the Eucharist isn't the Eucharist. And let me also say this because I I, I kind of guess I threw the gauntlet down tonight. But like, just something for people to consider. If someone profaned the Holy Eucharist in the last two years, if they've denied the reality of the, of the body and blood, of <laughs> Jesus Christ being the body and blood, if they've said it was something else and all these other things, and you guys know I'm talking about messing with spoons and doing all this other stuff, right? If they did it then, if they didn't openly repent, if they didn't make people know that like, hey, I was wrong for doing that, they're going to do it again. So 100%. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna do it again. They're, and they're going to do it again this fall when, when, in winter when it, they're gonna be talking about the numbers. So, so everybody get ready. That's, that's what's up. Don't be surprised. You think you're good. You're like, oh, you know, Father Jimmy Bob, it was just a crazy time, whatever. Unless Father Jimmy Bob said to the people or said to you like, yeah, you know what? I, uh, I'm really, I really regret that happened. Hope God can forgive me. Unless, unless you've even heard a rumor of that, Father Jimmy Bob is going to do it again when it comes to <laughs> So this is, 
this is um, one of the things I have run into, and I'm and this is me throwing down my gauntlet, which is considerably smaller and less jewel encrusted than Father Turbo's. But I will say like that the one thing I feel fully qualified to speak on is this crap. And I will say this wholeheartedly that these Orthodox people are pulling in AA meetings where they're having AA meetings with uh, people, Catholics, Protestants, Satanists, whoever, whoever makes their way to an AA meeting and then ending it with the Lord's prayer and joining in prayer with those guys. So unless I'm really, really mistaken about this, I have, I, I, I personally, it's a load of hooey. And, and, you know, they say, oh, you know, this is a communal space, you know, like God's here present with everyone. And I will say that, like, no, I don't say the Lord's Prayer with, you know, with a Catholic. The canon strictly forbid it. And I didn't arrive at that conclusion by myself. St. Paisios refused to do the Our Father with the Catholic priest. And he said it created something called, and I, I could be wrong, I'm misquoting, I think like good tension. It was like, Father, say the prayer with us. He said, I won't. We're not of the same faith. And just kind of sat, sat, sat there smiling gently. And then that kind of caused the priest, the Catholic priest, to be like, okay. You know, and like that's happened to me before where somebody's like, why, you know, and I didn't really want to get into it with them. So I didn't, but I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I, I, I won't do that. And maybe that's me throwing down the gauntlet on an issue that's not important. But like that, it is important to me because it's just like, you know, then when does it end? So then, I'm sitting here and I'm saying that and like I'm talking about this correction and then my lovely phone St. Jo uh, St. Joseph the Hezekast so this is what I would say to you and to everyone never seek to correct each other with anger but with only humility and sincere love because one temptation does not cast out another temptation when you see anger ahead forget about correcting for that mo for the moment forget about correcting for the moment once you see that the anger has passed, that peace has come, and that the powers of discernment are functioning properly, then you speak beneficially. Because what Father said earlier about the emotion disarming your discernment is absolutely true, and it cuts both ways. Because I have absolutely needlessly corrected people on issues. I've absolutely died on hills that I had no business dying on. And it might have embittered that person towards God even more. It might have embittered person... You know, so I, I'm 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 working with a guy, or I'm not working with him, but I'm I'm in I'm in conversation with this guy, and we know we have a lot of different opinions about this stuff. He tends to be a, a lot more ecumenical or ecumen ecumenical and whatever. He's an ecumenist, self-professed ecumenist, and I, and there have been times where I have absolutely spoken out of turn to this person. I've absolutely overcorrected out of a spirit of anger, and when that happened. I could tell, you know, like Elder Thaddeus says, when you are debating a person and you have true discernment, you will see that it is not the person you're debating with, but the spirit of the fallen age. And I did not have that discernment. And he said, what will happen is you will create a tension and a grossness in the room. He does not say grossness. That's my word. You are creating a grossness in the room that is not beneficial for anybody. You are no longer in a place of spiritual correction. You are in a place of winning an intellectual, uh, winning an intellectual debate. And you want to come out on right. you like, you want to come out on top. You want to be right. And that is the trap that I have fallen into there. I don't know why I got on this tangent. It's late guys. I'm sorry, but that is this portion that I would be remiss if I didn't mention, because as this stuff starts to come more and more, I mean, father is, I guess we can end in just a minute, but like, should we as Orthodox and as these trip, as these traps get more and more devious, should we be more, should we like move the bar a little bit over for what's acceptable? Like, you know, so like a Protestant. No, 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 no. What we need to do is we need to, to go deeper and, 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 and firmer on our basics. Like, let me just throw out a little prescription, right? Like, if you're not saying morning and evening prayers, or if you don't have a prayer rule that you're struggling to be consistent at, notice that it's struggling in the right way right? Which means you're doing it more than you're not. You know what I mean? And if like you fail, okay, like, yeah, 
guess what, guys? If you miss your prayer roll for one night, fine. Make it up, right? Make it up the next day, right? Double up a little bit. Like, this is where we got to be at. Like, I'm, it, we, <laughs> for, for what we're in and what's coming, we have to have just the most basic things, right? Like, talk to your spiritual father. You start fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. You know, I mean, forgive me. The stuff is just, these basics are so important, you know? Be reading spiritual material. Have something that you're nibbling on. If not, you know, throughout the week, definitely every day. Something that you're nibbling on. Something that isn't just a history book. You know what I mean? Um, have these practices. Sin Paisios. It's worth me pulling up this quote. He says in regards of, let go and give me quickness. Saint Paisios, in in talking about, as you say here, uh, people in the last oh, people in the last days, like the last Christians basically just to pass down the faith is going to be enough. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the uh, exact quote, but, you know, basically he says, you know, um, just to Father, able to, I can yeah. vamp for a second. I can vamp because there's, uh, I was listening to Father Cosmos who said that there was a monk who had an image, um, a, a, a revelation of like these monks who were looking to like, they had like wings flying over a river and that the early monks were flying like no problem. And then the monks in the latter days, they had like these busted wings that they were trying mm -hmm. to fly with. And they kept falling and having to like get back out of the water and fly again. So, I mean, it, it, it's yeah. becoming more psychological without a doubt. Like, yeah. And, oh, here we go. Okay. St. Paisios, people of the 21st century, 21st century will be saved and even acquire holiness for three obediences for keeping the Orthodox faith and passing it on to others, above all to their children and their grandchildren, for daily repentance and for the regular participation in the sacraments. So keeping the Orthodox faith and passing it on to others, above all to their children and grandchildren, that's evangelism, right? That's passing on the faith to others and especially your family, right? Daily repentance, right? Page 40, what is that? 45, 44 in the, you know, Jordanville prayer book, pray the Holy Spirit. Daily praying to God, forgive me for being angry with my wife. Forgive me, Lord, I overate too much, you know, blueberry pie today, you know, forgive me. Like I was on that website, you know, like God sees it. Don't act like he does it. Repent, you know, confess your sins to God daily. And then pray that God gives you a soft heart and then come to the priest with your confession so that the priest can help you to begin to make repentance. Because many confess, not everyone repents, right? And then regular participation in sacraments. This is, this is all that's being asked of us. But in order to do those things, we have to have some basics. And the reason why I'm saying this now is because we shouldn't shift anything. We need to be on the royal path. We shouldn't shift anything left or right. What we need to do is we need to know for sure what the truth is, right? We've talked about this before. How does an FBI agent know the difference in a false and a fake ID? Well, my old client who was an FBI agent, he told me they taught them to study the real ones so well that they could spot a, a fake ID. We need to know the faith, right? This is why Sifroni was so keen on things like dogma. Like we just need, you need to know the faith, right? This is what we need to do. We need to be so immersed into it. That's how you get discernment. Mm -hmm. because then when you hear something that's false, you're like, hold on, that's, no, 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 something's wrong. Because your heart has been tuned in to the truth. So don't shift anything. Stay focused on, on the tradition, what the fathers teach. Stay focused on that and, and really know what the game is. The game is to water down the faith 
through emotional experience, through wanting to be the nice guy, through wanting to fit in with the world. Don't you know that, imit- that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? We need to learn this lesson, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this, is, this is what has undone and what will undo people because it's not about people falling off and being like, I'm not even Orthodox anymore because blah, blah, blah. It's about people who are like, no, no, this is, you know, I'm Orthodox, but da, 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 da. As soon as they say the but and then the da, 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 that's, that's the problem. So this is the question I'm going to end on. And I'm going to say that, Father, we're, this is the question I was going to ask way earlier. Father, were you Orthodox when uh, Brian Head, no, was it Monkey or Head from Corn had his conversion? Yeah. Were you, you were Orthodox when that happened? Were you into that? Like, were, that- you, were, were you like, oh, praise God, like, you know, glory to God? Because I, I, I don't know, because honestly, I mean, I, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I, I've never liked corn. And oh, so, no. like, oh, gosh, no. I just, you know, no, no, I don't care. Hey, God bless him. I hope it's a thing, but like, no, nah, I'm not. But were you like, did you see it as a good thing at the time? Were you like, oh, wow, this dude from this really awful, and I mean awful, new metal band. Has. No, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't. And I tell you what, I'm not trying to be that cool guy who, because I'm not, it's not at all. It's just like, I'm leery of that stuff. Mm. And by the time that happened, I was already leery of that stuff, you know? And I just call that my kind of like contrarian, whatever, proto hipster like tendencies. Call it what you want. But um, I saw enough in my time as evangelical, some sort of actor some sort of sports guy, somebody great. Let's get him, grab him. And like, put a mic in his hand, put a mic in his hand. Hey, I'm Joel Alstein. Check out my boy, Kanye. You know what I mean? Like I get that. And it was just like, it's, it's, it's tempting because, you know, with Kanye, it's like, man, you know, it's like, okay, you hope, you hope. But then it's just like, Ooh, you know? And so it's just, it's one of those things where I truly don't judge it. And, and, and I'll just, I'll put it like this with Rygar or whatever his name is, you know, I'm not judging him. And what I mean by that is I genuinely don't know what God's going to do with him. I hope, I, I hope God does grant him repentance, you know, but I have to say for the flock, beware of his vision. It's not, it's not true. I, those two things, I can say both. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because because he's just being used, and like we said, the ritual worked. The ritual worked. The ritual worked. It, I'm gonna it, go back and I'm gonna watch my face when I'm watching that first video because I can almost probably see like the light emanating from my head for one second because it was just like, oh, the ritual worked. Like, yeah, totally. And, and that guy, you know, Pat, youth pastor guy. It's just so funny how people don't even like they don't even want to. They so badly. This is this is the thing. This is why people are just kowtowing Dr. <laughs> Peterson. They so badly want to be relevant. They so badly want to be relevant and to win a name of uh, win a game of numbers. I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, like, in fact, I'm leery of it. Woe well unto you when men speak well of you. I'm leery of it. It's a bad sign. It's a bad sign if everyone's like. You know what I mean? You're not a Christian until you've encountered, you know, <laughs> impossible you, odds. So, yeah. Do you think that being contrarian is like one of the proto, like maybe a person's been contrarian their entire life kind of, and it's like one of those proto characteristics of like, they would be really good because I've noticed from the orthodox people i've met we all are kind of contrarian i probably i'm probably lesser on the spectrum of contrarian but i am perfectly okay with just being like ah uh, no no uh, stop stop right there like no 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 no. Yeah, forgive me i, I don't want to get too hard i i, I want to say i almost c- contrarian contrarianism is not good actually because because having a contradictive spirit is like a whole thing 
But there's a whole contradictive like disposition. Yeah, can be that's bad. not what I have. No, but yeah. like, so, saying, so yeah, you're you're not. That's the word contrarian is not the word you're looking for. Yeah, that's yeah. not the word you're looking for. Yeah, you're you're looking for something more like skepticism or or being skeptical or or you know not buying it. Yeah, like yeah. that. That's different, and and we should have that. We should be skeptical of things because we. <sighs> this is the thing there was a there was a time when something was orthodox you could trust it you didn't have to think about it you know but like within reason right but you know the last few years it's it's we all are you we're doing okay now but it's just like we were all so shocked you never you you didn't know who was going to end up where sure that's part of the game at this point you know what i mean and we're and dark times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark times. Uh, but in the darkest of times, the smallest of light is brilliant. So I, psh, well said. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think we'll end it there. It's late and I want to go to bed. Um so uh I'm gonna plug uh give me a couple days on those. I, I don't know who is listening to it, but for whoever, I'm gonna have to go and wait till this is published and listen to all the music we named because there's a bunch of it I didn't know and I have to look it up and put it on Spotify. So give me a couple of days. Check out the merch store if you guys are so inclined. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you. That. Thank you for having a good night. Okay. Bye bye now. <laughs>